Now, here's meteorologist Asha DeVay with your forecast first. Although things are fairly quiet across our area right now, there is a severe thunderstorm watch in effect until 10 p.m. Now, these storms that are going to be moving through are capable of producing pretty large hail as well as wind gusts in excess of about 60 miles an hour. Obviously, none of that going on right now in our viewing area, but as you can see, there are some storms headed our way. And as we zoom out, this is part of a much larger system that's really taking over the entire East Coast. Right now, there are tornado watches in effect north of our area, so hopefully that will skip our end of the system. System because looking a little weaker down on our end, but still a chance for that severe weather coming up. I'll tell you more about it. We'll get details about timing and what exactly to expect. Of course, we'll have a look at your weekend weather and a look at your seven day forecast. WWAY News at 5 starts right now. Live, local, interactive, and in high definition. This is WWAY News Channel 3 at 5. On WWAY at 5, a few area sports teams are concerned about the petition against a taxpayer-funded stadium. Good evening and thanks for joining us for your news at 5. I'm Kaki Catlett. And I'm Chris Phillips. A closer look at the petition against a taxpayer-funded ballpark is raising some eyebrows. City leaders say that petition could affect established area teams. WWAY's Cliff Pyron has the lead at 5. Cliff. Kaki, the petition says no city money shall be used to fund any multi-use sports stadium for the purpose of professional sports and other events. That language has teams concerned. Hammerhead's majority owner Bill Rudisill says he does not want a taxpayer-funded ballpark. Despite that, he is worried if the petition becomes law, it could put his team out of business. The Wilmington Sharks have similar concerns. Management says it will wait until the signatures are verified before they decide what direction they need to go in. Organizers say they never intended the petition to affect these teams and that city leaders responded this way as a scare tactic. Coming up on WWAY at 6, we'll hear from those teams and petitioners. Kaki. All right, thank you, Cliff. For tonight's online poll question, we want to know, how do you think the petition against a taxpayer-funded ballpark will affect the future of the Sharks and the Hammerheads? Log on to WWAYTV3.com to check out your options there and vote. We will have those results tonight on WWAY News Channel 3 at 11. In New Hanover County, Monday is your chance to sound off on the county budget. Commissioners are looking at a revenue neutral tax rate of 55.4 cents. It's a higher rate than last year to offset a $5 billion loss in property value countywide. You can voice your opinion at the public hearing during Monday night's commission meeting. It starts at 6 at the old courthouse. New details on attempts to sell the old Brunswick Community Hospital. County commissioners will consider a deal at their meeting on Monday night. Crown Management Group, which backed out of an earlier deal, wants to lease the property for five years before buying it for $1.5 million. In the meantime, the company would take over operations and maintenance. In Wilmington, the American dream is coming true for some future Habitat for Humanity homeowners. The nonprofit group is building five houses in seven days with some expert help. WWAY's Marissa Jasik is here with more. Chris, it's called the Home Builders Blitz. It's a national movement to build 200 homes across the U.S. Habitat partnered with six Wilmington area home builders to build five houses in the Gideon Point development. What normally would take 16 weeks to finish will be move in ready in one week, but they are not free. Habitat sells the homes to buyers who pay a mortgage and put in their fair share of work. It's called sweat equity. 250 hours for single parents and 400 for married couples. Coming up at 530, we'll hear from one very excited future homeowner and more about the Builders Blitz program. Kaki. Thank you, Marissa. In Wilmington, the arrest of a man on several warrants landed a woman in jail after police say she tried to eat heroin. Wilmington police say they arrested Terrence Broyles on outstanding warrants, including conspiracy to commit murder. When they searched where he had been staying, they found Chauncey Edmonds and a small child. Police say Edmonds tried to eat that heroin to get rid of it. She faces drug and child abuse charges. A developing story from Jacksonville where the victim of an apparent murder suicide warned his family and friends something might happen to him just hours before his death. 30 year old Jason Eimer posted on Facebook. If something happens to me tonight, I love you all. Police found him shot to death in a bank parking lot around midnight. The suspect 32 year old Christopher Apker later killed himself at a motorcycle shop. 
On the roads, the Isabel Holmes Bridge in Wilmington will be closed this weekend. The DOT says it will close the bridge at 8 tonight for electrical and mechanical repairs. It will be closed all weekend. Crews should have that bridge back open by 5 a.m. on Monday. New this evening, not a good start for the UNCW baseball team in the NCAA tournament. Vanderbilt scored five runs in the fourth inning to take a commanding lead over the Seahawks. UNCW trailed 8-2 to two in the ninth inning at last check. We'll have an update coming up in our news at 6. There's more baseball happening tonight. Whiteville High School is in Zebulon where they'll play Randleman for the 2A state championship series. Randleman is the defending state champion while the Wolfpack last won the state title back in 1991. Tonight's game starts at 8. Games 2 and, if necessary, 3 will be played tomorrow. In New Hanover County, Blair Elementary School held a career carnival today for 3rd, 4th, and 5th graders. Students got to meet professionals from a cross-section of fields, including Good Morning Carolina anchor Ashley Jacobs. The kids got a chance to ask people questions about their jobs to give them an idea of what the future may hold. In Brunswick County, the National Weather Service's radar in Shalote is offline right now for some major upgrades. Good morning, Carolina meteorologist Tim Buckley took a look inside and tells us what the new technology could mean for your forecast. Well, did you ever wonder how those radar products we show you on TV get there in the first place? They all start right here, just outside of Shalote at the National Weather Service's radar dome, but it's undergoing a huge upgrade right now that's going to change the way we show you storms. So how does our radar work now? Let's start by taking you inside. Once you climb a few steps, you can get a glimpse of what's going on. It's a huge dish rotating constantly, sending out pulses into the atmosphere looking for rain. But that pulse can't tell us exactly what's there. Imagine that this baseball is a raindrop. With our current radar, we're only looking at it horizontally. By looking at it one way, we can tell that it's there and how it's moving, but don't know much about its shape. That's all changing. Crews are hard at work and doing some heavy lifting to change out the old parts and put in a new system, which will give us what's called a dual polarization radar. Instead of looking only horizontally, now we'll look vertically too, meaning we'll be able to know the size and shape of the rain, snow, sleet, and hail in the sky. It's going to help uh, us provide better rainfall information data. It's also going to help us determine where hail is in a storm. In a worst case scenario, large debris flying in the sky will give us ability to confirm if a large tornado is on the ground. But just like getting a new computer upgrade, there will be some challenges for meteorologists when using this new data. It's actually a learning curve, the experience of being able to look at the, look at the imagery that comes back and to determine what is actually occurring. And this is all new for the whole weather service. Now by the end of the year, the weather service estimates that all of these radars will be upgraded across the entire country, meaning everybody has a better look at the storms. In Shalot, meteorologist Tim Buckley, WWAY News Channel 3. While the radar is offline, the Weather Service is using the radars in Raleigh and Moorhead City, as well as Columbia and Charleston, South Carolina, to track storms that form across our area. So you can rest easy. They'll still be able to issue severe weather warnings until the upgrade is complete, which will be early next week. And don't forget, you can follow all of today's stories and more when you go to our website. That's WWAYTV3.com. All of the news, weather, politics, and even some sports you need is right there. And while you are there, you can also download our mobile app and always be in the know when on the go. A day after John Edwards was found not guilty, members of the jury are speaking out about the case. And a great combination of the beach and live music kicks off this weekend. We have a preview of the Carolina Beach Music Festival. Good news for travelers. Airlines are trying to cut flight costs. And our George Elliott puts his hurricane knowledge to good use and gives us his predictions for the year. When you watch News Channel 3 at 5, you get way more local news and way more stories that interest you. Why? Because here at WWAY News Channel 3, we're live, local, and interactive. Now, here's Chief Meteorologist Jerry Jackson with your forecast first. Rainfall in great abundance across southeastern North Carolina as we take a look at the latest radar mosaic. We don't have any active severe weather warnings out there, so that's certainly good news. With some heavy showers continuing to fall down across parts of Duplin, Pender, New Hanover, and eastern Brunswick County. As we zoom in, sometimes we like to take a look at the shear tracks. Wind shear, of course, being one of those parameters we look for for possible tornado formation. But the shear has been very unimpressive this afternoon and continues to weaken. So hopefully severe weather will be something we don't have to continue 
10 with. A look at the heavier rainfall amounts down south across South Carolina. Even locally, we've seen well over an inch, in some cases, over two inches of rain. We'll let you know what the rest of the night holds coming up. WWAY News Channel 3 at 5 starts right now. Live, local, interactive, and in high definition. This is WWAY News Channel 3 at 5. Now on WWAY at 5, Wilmington police could be knocking on your door tomorrow, but why? Good evening and thanks for joining us for your news at 5. I'm Kaki Catlett. And I'm Chris Phillips. Wilmington police are stepping up efforts to figure out the biggest problem areas in our community. That's right. And what police call part of their focus deterrence program, officers will go door to door with a survey tomorrow. WWAY's Cliff Pyron has the lead at 5. Cliff. Kaki, around 20 officers will knock on doors in the north side of the city, asking residents how to make their neighborhoods safer. Other questions include the availability of weapons and how much lack of respect there is towards law enforcement. Today we went door to door asking similar questions and what residents reaction would be to police officers showing up on their doorsteps. Many people we talked to said they would not talk to police that is because they're worried about potential threats from neighbors. Coming up at 530 more about the police program and reaction from residents in the survey area. Kaki. Thank you, Cliff. New details about the funeral of a Bladen County Sheriff's deputy. As fellow deputies go to Dwayne Hester's funeral tomorrow, Sheriff's offices from surrounding counties will lend a helping hand. Brunswick, Columbus, Pender, Robeson, and Cumberland counties will each send two officers to patrol Bladen County. Officers will respond to calls and other duties until the funeral is over. Visitation for Deputy Hester is tonight from 6 to 9 p.m. at the Hickory Grove Baptist Church Family Life Center in Bladen Borough. Now his funeral is tomorrow at 2 p.m. at the same location. Hester died Friday night while responding to a call when he lost control of his cruiser and hit a tree. Only on three, the Secretary of State's office is investigating a Leland business in a trademark enforcement action. Velocity Clothing on Village Road is part of an ongoing investigation, but there are no arrests at this point. Special agents believe the case will wrap up soon. We'll have more on this developing story as it becomes available. In Wrightsville Beach, with a smoking ban under consideration at Wrightsville Beach, many people are wondering if the town could even enforce such an ordinance. WWAY's Katie Harden is here now with more. Katie. Chris, on a sunny day, Wrightsville Beach is packed with visitors, and there are some laws on the beach to keep those people safe. But who draws the line on what's legal, what's not, and where? Wrightsville Beach Mayor David Signati says the line of enforcement is a little confusing for both locals and visitors. So far, though, the town has not had any issues enforcing laws. He says the town is unique in that it owns land from the dunes to the high tide line. Beyond that line, though, town ordinances are no longer enforceable. Now, coming up at 6, we'll have more about the line, what that means for you, and how it could affect a smoking ban and drinking laws at the beach. Khaki. Thank you, Katie. An update that was first on three online. The New Hanover County Board of Elections has verified enough signatures on a petition against a tax funded baseball stadium in Wilmington. Elections Director Marvin McFadden said his office verified 74 more signatures today. That petition now goes to Wilmington City Council, which must either adopt it or put it up for a public vote. Tonight on World News with Diane Sawyer, the sex abuse trial of former Penn State football coach Jerry Sandusky continues. Today, testimony got emotional as the witness, only known as victim number one, took the stand. Mike McQuery, the former assistant coach, who says he witnessed an encounter with Sandusky and a young boy, also took the stand. A fake call yesterday caused New Jersey authorities to rush to the scene of what they thought was an accident at sea. But what seemed like an emergency was actually a hoax. An intensive search for passengers from the yacht has turned up no signs of people, debris, or even a boat. We'll continue to look at how much such a prank sends costing taxpayers and how the bill ends up getting paid. Happening tonight, game one of the NBA Finals. It's been an exciting shortened season for the association. Starting tonight, Oklahoma City will take on Miami. It's a matchup that has some meteorological ties. Good morning, Carolina meteorologist Tim Buckley explains. Well, after all the games, it's now down to Oklahoma City and Miami in the NBA Finals. And while it may be the matchup that fans have wished for, perhaps nobody wanted it more than us weathermen. After all, it's the Heat versus the Thunder, the all-weather finals. And while LeBron and Durant will battle it out on the court, it's too tough to pick who will win that battle. So here's what we're going to do. What if it was a battle of all Mother Nature's forces, the Thunder up against the Heat in a weather war of epic proportions? So will the 
heat swelter the thunder or will the thunder strike the heat? A death blow. All right, enough analogies. Let's just think about it. Okay, starting with the thunder by itself, thunder is merely just a nuisance, albeit a loud one that serves to scare kids and dogs, and in itself, it's completely harmless. It's just a sound. But you can't get thunder without lightning, and it's actually the intense heat of lightning racing through the relatively cool air that creates shock waves that we hear as the loud boom. So with thunder, we have lightning, and sometimes stemming from severe thunderstorms storms as well that can bring hail, destructive winds, and even deadly tornadoes. So no doubt the thunder brings a strong case, even if it's by association. Now on the heat side of the argument, we all deal with it during the summertime pretty nicely with our air conditioning, but left out in the elements, heat is a formidable foe. And get this, it's heat, not hurricanes, tornadoes, or lightning. That is the number one killer each year in the U.S. And if you think about it, without heat, you wouldn't have thunder in the first place. I mean, the heat from lightning directly causes the sound that we hear as thunder. And not to mention, without the heating of the Earth's surface, we'd never even be able to create the rising air that brings out those strong thunderstorms that create thunder. After all, it's the heating of the Earth by the sun that creates all weather in the first place. So I guess what I'm saying is that heat is all powerful. Now, does that mean that we're forecasting a Miami victory? Well, if the series goes seven games, it will finish up on June 26th, a 14 day forecast. Well, let's just say at this point, nobody's good enough to nail down that shot. For WWAY, I'm meteorologist Tim Buckley. Thank you, Tim. And of course, you can watch the entire NBA Finals right here on WWAY. Coverage tips off tonight at 8 o'clock with a special Jimmy Kimmel Live game night, followed by NBA Countdown. That's at 8.30, and Game 1 begins at 9 o'clock. So for tonight's online poll question, we want to know, who do you think will win the NBA Finals? Check out WWAYTV3.com to see our choices there, and you can take a vote. We'll have your results tonight on WWAY News Channel 3 as soon as that game one wraps up. Don't forget you can follow all of today's stories and more when you go to our website www.awytv3.com. All of the news, weather, politics and sports you need is right there. And while you're there, you can also download our mobile app and always be in the know when you're on the go. Well, it is a battle to November for Mitt Romney and President Obama. Tonight, a new poll shows there's a change in tide right here in North Carolina. Anglers are hoping to hook the big one in the Big Rock Blue Marlin Tournament. If you love meat, you may love what Burger King is adding to its menu. But first, the latest on a Colorado wildfire that is raging out of control. When you watch News Channel 3 at 5, you get way more local news and way more stories that interest you. Why? Because here at WWAY News Channel 3, we're live, local, and interactive. Now, here's Chief Meteorologist Jerry Jackson with your forecast first. No mistake about it, we are definitely back firmly entrenched in a summertime pattern outside. Now that means 80s for some of our coastal counties, but 90s for just about everyone else. Let's take a look at the current conditions out there. 93 degrees at the Holly Shelter reporting site in Pender County. White Lake checking in at 96 now. Whiteville has cooled down, if you can call it that, to 88. Wilmington running cooler anyway at 87. And Southport checking in at 84 degrees. Just a few isolated thunderstorms have popped up in the usual suspect areas off to the west of Jacksonville we're seeing a cell. What will the rest of the night hold? We'll talk about that coming up and check in on the tropics. WWAY News Channel 3 at 5 starts right now. Live, local, interactive, and in high definition. This is WWAY News Channel 3 at 5. Now on WWAY at 5, two popular Surf City attractions will stay in town after all. Thanks for joining us tonight for your news at five. I'm Chris Phillips and I'm Kaki Catlett. Despite a looming eviction, the Beach House Marina in Surf City is still home to some tourist attractions. The owners of the Bell of Topsail and pirate ship Raven say they won't be leaving town. WWAY's Cliff Pyron is here with the lead at five. Cliff. Chris, after seeing our recent story, the people of Topsail Island have stepped up and now two of their favorite boats will stay. Captain David Luther says his friends at Century 21, about 200 yards from the Beach House Marina, are going to let him set up shop in their backyard. Luther hopes the lawsuit that he filed against Wells Fargo will buy him a few more weeks in their current location while they're waiting on new permits to be processed. Luther says the other tenants at the Beach House Marina plan on moving out when the bank applies more pressure. Coming up at 5.30, we'll hear more from Captain Luther on his new location. 
Kaki. Thank you, Cliff. A staple in downtown Wilmington is closing its doors. After more than two decades, Cafe Phoenix will serve its last meal on July 31st. WWAY's Marissa Jassic is here with more. Marissa. Kaki, workers say Cafe Phoenix was one of the first, if not the first, dining restaurant in downtown Wilmington. And employees say the closing means the end of an era. When owner Roy Clifton died after a battle with lung cancer, employees say his wife decided it was time to close a little earlier than expected. In 2010, the Cliftons moved the shop from its original 9th South Front Street location to where it is today. A special dinner is in the works for the restaurant's final day on July 31st with drink specials and interesting entrees. And coming up on News Channel 3 at 6, we'll hear from employees in reaction to the restaurant's closing. Kaki. Thanks, Marissa. So Cafe Phoenix is closing next month for tonight's online poll question. We're wondering, will you miss it? Log on to WWAYTV3.com to check out your options and cast your vote there. We will have those results tonight on WWAY News Channel 3 at 11. Another downtown uh, Wilmington restaurant that is Marrakesh has suddenly closed its doors. The Turkish Moroccan eatery on Front Street that only opened six weeks ago has shut down. Workers have recently been seen outside picketing the restaurant, claiming they were owed money from the owner. New this evening, emergency crews responded to a crash involving a Ford Explorer and a semi truck this afternoon. Police say the SUV was traveling on Shipyard Boulevard toward the state port when it crashed into the semi, which was turning left from Burnett Boulevard onto Shipyard. The driver of the SUV escaped with a few scratches, while the driver of the semi was not hurt. In Brunswick County, vice narcotics agents arrested Jose, Jose Manuel Mondragon of Calabash with possession after a charge that lasted almost eight pounds and found eight pounds of marijuana in his possession. Working with the New Hanover County Vice Narcotics Unit, agents also seized a firearm at the house in Ash. Mondragon is currently in the Brunswick County Detention Center. New at five. First it was spice, then it was bath salts. Now some people are using what is advertised as a ladybug attractant to get high. But just how easy is it to get your hands on this new synthetic drug amped here in the Cape Fear? WWAY's Katie Harden has more. Katie. Kaki, the new synthetic drug craze Amped is worrying parents across the nation, but it's not that easy to find here in our area thanks to state legislation. We told you last summer about a synthetic drug called bath salts. The stimulant known as methadrone was banned in North Carolina last June, but the drug has still made headlines across the country because of the psychotic effects it has on its users. Now that bath salts has been outlawed here, other drugs are popping up in its place. But what effects do they have and where are they? Coming up at 6, we'll answer those questions and tell you what law enforcement has to say about the issue. Chris. Katie, thanks for that story. In a developing story, the NCAA made it official today. UNCW men's basketball team will not be allowed to compete in postseason in the 2012-13 season due to low academic progress rate scores. UNC Wilmington Athletics Director Jimmy Bass says he's disappointed. He stressed academics will continue to be the primary focus of the Seahawks athletic program. We'll have more on this story as it comes in. In Wrightsville Beach, the town will be without its biggest surf contest of the summer. Sweetwater Surf, surf Shop, that is, has confirmed that after seven straight years, the Reef Sweetwater Pro-Am will not run this year. The contest has been a haven for the best East Coast surfers. World-renowned surfer Rob Machado won last eight years, a last event, that is, uh, taken the lion's share of the $20,000 prize purse. Fortunately happening today, it is International Surfing Day, a day dedicated to uniting surfers around the world to celebrate the sport and bring awareness to preserving the beaches and the oceans. WWAY's Taylor Thompson has more. Surfers from across the globe came together in celebration of International Surfing Day. Here at Wrightsville Beach, the Surf Rider Foundation teamed up with Stop Titan to organize free surf lessons as well as a beach cleanup. Now in its eighth year, International Surfing Day, created by the organization Surf Rider, has become popular with beachgoers across the world. The purpose of the occasion is to bring awareness to the sport as well as give back to the oceans and the beaches. Surf Rider has always been a part of helping protect our oceans, beaches, and waterways. And education and activism are the two most important components of that. To get better acquainted with the sand in the water, beachgoers collected trash and stayed around for some surfing instructions on the beach with the Surf Rider team. And teaching people about the ocean is the greatest job in the world. It's not really, doesn't really feel like work because you're in the water, you're in the ocean, you're out 
outside, you're enjoying life and you're sharing it with other people. After practicing in the sand, the surfers headed out into the ocean to put their new skills to use. Smiles were seen from all those celebrating International Surfing Day by catching a few waves. Regardless of whatever they've got going on in their lives, it always is a vehicle for uh, just changing lives, making people's lives better, making people happier. From Wrightsville Beach, Taylor Thompson, WWAY News Channel 3. International Surfing Day is recognized with over 200 events in 30 countries around the world. Three local beaches participated with free surfing lessons. Tonight on World News with Diane Sawyer, a House panel looking into the Justice Department's Operation Fast and Furious, a gun running probe gone terribly wrong, is nearing a vote on whether to cite Attorney General Eric Holder for contempt. Jake Tapper will report from Washington with those details of the scandal sending shockwaves through Congress. The defense of former Penn State football coach Jerry Sandusky has rested and his attorneys decided to not put the defendant on the stand. What should the jury expect as closing arguments begin tomorrow morning? Well, Jim Avila will have the latest from the courthouse in Pennsylvania. Don't forget you can follow all of today's stories and more when you go to our website, WWAYTV3.com. All of the news, weather, politics and sports you need is right there. While you're there, you can also download our mobile app and always be in the know when you are on the go. State legislators are hoping to reach a compromise on the budget, but that plan does not include money for eugenics victims. From Wilmington to New York City, today's extraordinary person is trying to make it big on the acting stage. And a new study says more people want their meat to be free of antibiotics. But first, former Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak is in critical condition. When you watch News Channel 3 at 5, you get way more local news and way more stories that interest you. Why? Because here at WWAY News Channel 3, we're live, local, and interactive.